Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we are delighted that you have welcomed us into your home, and we would just love to hear from you. So send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN. Mm -hmm. Dot com. And today, our guest today is Daniel McCormick. We had him on yesterday's show. He's the director of the Office of Religious Education in the Diocese of Birmingham, Alabama. You could go to our diocese website. It's bhmdiocese.org. You know, Joe, we don't have an email for Daniel. And if you want to contact Daniel, because he's been sharing so much, just write Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. That's our email address, and we'll get that to Daniel. And we'll forward that to him. Yeah. And our theme today really is about the Catholic youth, young adult attrition, principles for renewals. Why? Why are some of our youth and our young adults leaving, um, just separating themselves from the body of Christ in that mm -hmm. way? Maybe they're going to uh, another um, denomination. Maybe they just stopped going to church. Um, and we really are discussing the hard issues. It's hard to look at that and to say, why are they leaving? We all want to believe that everybody's happy yeah. and staying in the family, but that doesn't happen yeah. sometimes. And you know what's interesting? Many of them aren't per se leaving. Mm -hmm. They're just drifting away. Yes. And that's what it's over 70 something percent of these young people to age 23, they're saying, why did you leave? And some of them, it's, it's a it's a decision, it's personal, it's theological, it's moral. But 75% are like, I don't know, I just drifted, mm -hmm. I just drifted away. And guess what else they say? Nobody came to look for me. Right. And so these are things we've got to address as a community. And, and Daniel's making you know, a number of proposals to not only stem the tide, but for the Catholic Church with young people and young adults to be fruitful. Here's some of the things he's saying. If people can come to truly appreciate the sacrifice of the Mass. First and foremost, the Mass, who he is encountering Jesus in the Holy Mass. If our children do that, many of them will never leave. Well, none of them would leave if they really knew who he is in the Mass. If we can reclaim the vision for the parish as a geographic area. Yeah, I love that one. A mission field for us. If we can connect pastors and parish leaders with parents properly and wonderfully. If we can remind parents to have no fear, be confident, you're gifted, you're anointed to do this more than anybody else. If we can build up the parish as a place where each person is known by name. D does Father know my name? Do people in here know my name? I, I drifted away and nobody came to look for me. Right. Uh, or sometimes people, you know, you're in church and maybe you have an, an illness and all of a sudden you're not in the, the pew where you sit all the time. And it's like, you know, you might need to ask Father, where, where is that person? And I get it, you know, just say, well, why don't you send her a note? Why don't you send her a card and just say, I miss you. I haven't seen you in ways that we as the community of God, because the priest can't do everything, as a community of God can reach out to our brothers and sisters who we miss, maybe we haven't seen in a while. So very important topic because it's people, it's our young people, it's our youth, and God has a plan. He's given us the grace to be fruitful and to multiply and to raise up leaders for the future in our young people. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Please don't go away. Welcome back. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and today our guest is Daniel McCormick. He is the director of the Office of Religious Education for the Diocese of Birmingham, Alabama, right here. And so you can go to the website. It's bhmdiocese.org. And like Jim said, if you want to get in touch with Daniel, if he shared some things that you thought were really informative, you can always get in touch with Jim and Joy, and we could forward that email on to yeah. Daniel. Well, Daniel, we were talking so much, and it is a hard conversation. Um, 
we can all stick our head in the sand and pretend this isn't happening and people aren't drifting away. And But there are times of transitions in their lives when they just seem to drift away. But what are some of the whys that you have heard? Well, I've, I've done some reading and, and, and you're citing a lot of the statistics, Jim, and, and uh, I think it's true. Uh, one thing that I look to a lot, there was a, a study that was done in 2018 by Kara and St. Mary's Press called Going, Going, Gone. Mm. And I think it really closely encapsulates a lot of the response from the young people themselves. They say when they're asked, why is it that you slowly drifted? Why did you slowly disaffiliate from calling yeah. yourself Catholic? Uh, the most common responses are just what you're saying, is that I wasn't known by name, mm -hmm. that I felt as if I was an anonymous part of my community and that they didn't know where they belonged. Mm -hmm. And so, as you said, we, we sometimes presume that there's um, a doctrinal issue, and there might be. I mean, a lot of times people, before they tell you their full story, they might put on top of it mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things that are easy deflections. But a lot of it has to do with matters of the heart, too, where people feel as if they're personally disconnected. And it's a shame because, you know, here in our Catholic Church, we have the fullness of truth. They are going to have that personal encounter with Christ that they can have nowhere else and yet sometimes they can feel personally distanced from other members of the community. So I think it's incumbent on us um, to see where it is that the Lord has gifted and called us to be responsive. And like you were saying, Joy, it's not just the pastor's responsibility. Right. It can't be. It can't be. So, and, and you were sharing some great illustrations, I thought, uh, when we were off camera. Yeah. Of. Well, as a pastor's wife, when Jim was the Episcopal priest, one of the simple things that I did was everybody in our parish I wrote them a birthday card. Mm -hmm. We were praying for them and we wished them a happy birthday. Yeah. That was it. I mean, it wasn't anything like, ooh, you have to invent something new. No. But it, what it said to every person, man, woman, boy, and girl, we're thinking of you, we know it's your birthday, and we love you. you and we wish you a happy birthday. You that was it, yeah, and we meant it. And in each parish, as you were sharing about a parish mission, mm -hmm. um, you know, where, where we belong, well, we need to be looking out and saying, yeah. what are my gifts and talents? Can I text somebody and say, hey, maybe that's too much to send a note. Yeah. Well, text somebody and say, I haven't seen you in church, are things okay? Yeah. You know, where you been? Something like that. There are people who have gifts of encouragement, mm -hmm. gifts of hospitality. God gave those to you for a purpose, to share them, right? To reach out to our brothers and sisters, to encourage them in their need. Uh, you know, there's so many people who are going through hard times, particularly right now. Mm -hmm. So many people are, are touched by this pandemic. Okay. They have economic losses, health problems. And uh, when they're going through it and they feel alone, mm -hmm. you know, that can really compound some of their other reasons for drifting. Uh, it can happen with, with youth and young adults, but it certainly happens across the age spectrum. So I think both opportunity for renewal and for joy is for us really to enter into that mission, to see our young people. Again, we're talking about seeing, mm -hmm. see them, you know, know them, know their name, reach out to them. And there's programmatic consequences to that that could be applied in parish communities in lots of ways. You could have call teams or you could have prayer teams. Right. You could have, uh, you know, birthday mm -hmm. writing teams. You mm -hmm. could have all kinds of creative ways to live this out. But the principle is, let's know that young person. Mm -hmm. The way that God knows and loves that person, let's embody that as a parish community. Let's show that. And, and as a parish, and I know in the Catholic Church, and, and I, I don't mean this as a negative thing, but we did Protestant land, and believe it or not, in Protestant land, they got some of this down, and they really... Um, What's it? it? Well, the relational part of people. You're in the pew, I know you, you need, a, you need how can I help? I mean, we're, it's more community sense. Yeah. In Catholic land, it's kind of like we go in and we go out and we go back to our lives and we're not interconnected unless we're in a mom's group or we're in the Knights of Columbus or we're in a fraternus. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You got to get plugged in so you could find your place and space. Mm -hmm. And they even have young adults and mm -hmm. they have youth groups. But we as parents, then you have to make sure the kids show up and they're there to mm -hmm. say, this is where you belong. People are going to be with you and they're going to journey with you yeah. and they're going to love of you, yeah. right? There's a, I believe this is from Pope Benedict's book, Spirit of the Liturgy. He talked about how in the early church community, folks would gather in homes for the celebration of the mass. 
but they would also remain for a meal afterward. And you've got some uh, of Paul's writings are about this. You know, there were people fighting at the meals, mm -hmm. but they were spending the time together. He said one of the, the great things when the church came in the shadows, when Constantine granted basilicas to the church for the celebration of the, the mass in these beautiful spaces, was that it got removed from that more intimate environment. Mm -hmm. And one of the recommendations he put in that book was that we need to find some way that those two things touch yeah. again. Mm -hmm. So that it's not just this kind of transactional thing that I'm doing, which it never is yeah. with the sacraments. Mm -hmm. We're never just going for the, I did my duty and obligation and now right. I'm done. Yeah. It's so that I can go and encounter the person of Jesus Christ and be transformed and go out and be an agent of renewal, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we've got to, I think, take inspiration from Pope Benedict from others uh, to find those ways in which the two touch. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, you know, as you're sharing that, I'm thinking about one movement, the neo-catechumenal way, mm -hmm. it's called. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not the model for everyone, but mm -hmm. my understanding about that is that uh, the pastor of the church and the bishop, you know, mm -hmm. receives the neo-catechumenal way, accepts them, mm -hmm. and they allow Eucharist to be done in the homes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, the children and families are helping to prepare. They do the readings, help us yeah. to prayer, prepare the bread and the wine and so on, get everything ready and so on. And so they have mass at the parish, but some are having mass here. They're all one. Yeah. And they're seeing vocations being raised up like mm -hmm. incredible within the neo-catechumenal way. Because the kids are up close, they're there, they're yeah. helping to prepare, they're hearing the readings, it's coming out of their home, they understand the relationship with the parish and with the diocese. Yeah. And so that's one way. Yeah. But, but the, the home is a place of of gathering, that's the domestic church, yeah. but even bringing others in or, or how having, can, like you mentioned, the a journey. family of families, mm -hmm. the parish community. Yeah. How, can we, how can we model that? Right. We used to, we, when we came, I returned back to the Catholic Church and mm -hmm. Joy came into the Catholic Church, and we, we did. Um, we were starving for right. fellowship. So mm -hmm. we would just open up our home and have, yeah. I forget what we called it. It wasn't like journey home, but it was something like that. Yeah. And we had Catholic people there who had just come into the chur church, many of them from evangelical Pentecostal backgrounds yeah. and so on, that we used to home group fellowships and yeah. then that, that ended, that was mm -hmm. it. Yeah. But we were here saying, what, what just happened to us? Because we're in the church, we, yeah. we, we love the church, but and like, wow, what's people. going on? Like, yeah. oh well, maybe gosh, they would bring some you know. other people that weren't yeah. Catholic. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, this is how we're doing what we're doing. And you have to understand this is a Catholic gathering, but if yeah, you're not yeah. going to be overly offended or challenge every single thing, just come and see how we do what we do yeah. and what we believe. Well, and I think oftentimes all of us experience this where we know there's a deficit. We know mm -hmm. there's something that's not there that ought to be there and we wish for it to be there. I think sometimes that can be just an observation. Sometimes I think the Holy Spirit is prompting us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we see that deficit, we see one that no one else sees. Mm -hmm. And so if there's something that we've experienced outside our parish community like home fellowship yeah. and you saw that need yeah. and you started to meet the yeah. need, mm -hmm. you know, folks can, can kind of do a little examination. Where is it that I see that deficit yeah. here? Yeah. Where is it that we're not connecting? Mm -hmm. Has the Lord gifted me to do that? Yeah. yeah. You know, not, don't wait for the next person to do it. Be the person. Right? We did That's one right. thing, and, and parishes can do this. And like if you have a gathering, we, we did what was called the name tag Sunday. Mm -hmm. Our church started growing, and people were like, I don't know that person. I don't. And we did name tags. Yeah. And so you went to church and you had a name tag so that people were like, hey, Daniel, my name is. And so yeah. you can have that conversation. That was like so simple. <laughs> but what it did was it let me say your name because yep. I want to know you. And I, I say, hey, brother, hey, sister. You know, we yep. say, but I don't even know your name. Yep. Right? That's it. And people leave or, or drifting away and nobody knew they were gone. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew their name. Yep. Nobody knew the incident as to maybe why they happened. Yep. Our brother-in-law and our sister-in-law, Camille and Nino, out at of at the Diocese of Philadelphia, they had a thing where they would go mm -hmm. to fallen away Catholics. So the priest had a list mm -hmm. of people who left the church, and all they would do is go and visit them mm -hmm. and just say, we just came to welcome you back yep. to well, hear the story. To hear the story, you may not come back, yeah. but that's that thing. I drifted away and nobody came to me. Yeah. And so at least we're coming to say, we're so sorry, you are missed. We know you're missing here. Yeah. What do you want to share? It may be really difficult to hear what they want to share. Yeah. Or it may be something that could be easily you know, solved or not so easily solved. Or, or maybe they don't want to share. Plant a seed. Mm -hmm. Plant a seed. You plant the seed, you mm -hmm. know, and the Lord will provide the growth, right? right. Um, you, you made me think that name tag Sunday, my own pastor, 
father being he practiced that one one sunday not too long ago outside the liturgy you know but it was came up was before or after the celebration of mass we had a moment where there was a distribution of the name tags so many people around you you don't know them you know but we came to know one another's names and i could even see it in my children i could see it in my little ones that they were coming to know their neighbor in a new and different way right. and they remembered each other. Yeah. Once right. they knew each other's names, they really felt connected. Right. Um, Distribution of the name tag sounds a little bit too <laughs> ritual. And so, you know, that may, sacri- I, I don't yeah, know, we gotta get a different like name. A, <laughs> right, right. <The> <laughs> of- what a purpose it serves, right? Yeah. I mean, it was and so easy as that is. Let's, yeah. I wanna address because it's not either or, it's both end, yes, right? Okay, yes, so we're saying, hey, there's a lot of things our evangelical brothers are doing, or just yes. people that understand building personal relationship, knowing one another and talking, yeah. sharing, small groups and so on, sure. that we can really learn from, and that was always in our Catholic expressions Absolutely. in faith. Absolutely. So that's all there. But what's also true is that our experience as Catholics, at least my experience, spending time in the evangelical community, and this way, what, when, when we would gather in Protestant land, mm-hmm. We would gather together, we'd go to church, a beautiful thing, and we would, you know, beseech the Lord to come and beseech him to be there. We want to know you, Lord. We want to taste you. You know, we want to, we're hungry for you. And my experience in the Catholic Church is we don't have to do that because he's here. Hmm. I go to the Catholic Church because he's already here. I don't have to ask him to come. The deal is, am I here? Am I really here? Am I attentive? Am I rightly disposed? I don't have to ask him to come. He's already here. Our kids need to know that as well as... The, the personal encounter and getting to know people and small sure. groups and youth. We need, we, it's no, both it, and, it, and we it can't compromise. With, with the mass. We are here for Christ. We're here for the liturgy. Yeah, and there's other things we can do, name tags, yeah. days, and different things, charismatic things, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's not the, the main liturgy, but we can have other mm-hmm. services like that. And that's the training we need to have if we don't want to lose our kids, yeah. if we want to bring them back. Those who've gone Pentecostal, they've gone whatever, we said, well, tell me about that because I believe in that. Yeah. And you know what? We, we're the largest charismatic Pentecostal community in the world, the Catholic Church. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. What, oh, really? What the heck are you talking about? I like to say that here, even in our own diocese, that if we think of ourselves as a particular church here in the Diocese of Birmingham, we often think of ourselves as a minority because we're surrounded by so many of our evangelical brothers and sisters. But if you conceive of yourself as belonging to that whole particular church, mm-hmm. you belong to the biggest church here. Right. There's yeah. n- and, and, so, and, and there's so many of us that the Lord has given you know, these special opportunities, talents, relationships that we can reach out, we can go and do. I think the Holy Father has been asking that of all the baptized for nearly a decade Mm -hmm. now to to really do this kind of examination and to see where it is that the Lord is calling us. It's part of our following Jesus, you know, so. Speak to us about um, the domestic church, the parents responsibility, but also, catechetical teaching, religious education in the parish level, yeah. and how to network together the parent, the teachers, you know, whatever key players are, the parish, yeah. the priest, and then everybody has their role in place, and neither one should be usurping the other one's place, especially the parent, sure. but how do we coordinate? How do we work together? Because that, oftentimes it's not happening, it doesn't seem. I, I think that we have to kind of mind the gaps. We have to see where those are. Sometimes there's a big gap between the formal catechesis going on with the uh, uh, teachers, in the parish or in the parochial school and the parents. We have to find some way, and there's many creative ways. There's great curricula out there, there's great Mm -hmm. models out there for the ways in which the parents are equipped, trained, supported, mentored, and being able to hand on uh, the the faith at home and do that in coordination with their parish and parish leaders. Uh, I think we also need to mind the gaps in um, an age. Uh, We have um, a lot of uh, catechesis for the youngest, which mm-hmm. is wonderful and beautiful. And we understand education is something that starts when you're a child and you continue on to your, your professional training and then you got into the world. Well, the, the model of formation in the church really is kind of upside mm-hmm. down. We're supposed to be forming the adults. So the adults are witnessing to the faith and helping to raise the children. But we've got this, this big focus on our, our kids' catechesis that's important, mm-hmm. but it gives that impression that at some point it kind of peters out, mm-hmm. that it's not a lifelong thing. And there are some transitions that are so important from childhood to adolescence, from adolescence to young adulthood, from young adulthood into married life and professional life. And a lot of times in those gaps, yeah. either the gap between the parish and the family or the gap between this age and that, it's kind of where programming ends and it's where so wow. much of this disaffiliation begins, mm-hmm. kind of get lost. That's huge. Yeah. And it kind of answers the question for me, with Jesus and his first disciples 
mm -hmm. apostles, the holy women, that periodically he would say to them, if you want to follow me, yeah. will you follow me? And every time I read that, I say, Lord, you've already asked them to follow you. And they said, yes. Why do you keep asking? Yeah. Because it's those transitions. Yeah. We're ready to go. We're fixing to go through. As we say, we're fixing to go through a transition here. Yeah. Yeah. Will you follow me? And, and Lord, I feel offended that you asked me. No, something new's happened. Something yeah. else is happening here. It's yeah. going to be another time of decision. We're another time of deeper. temptation. Mm -hmm. Closer. Yeah. And, and I think that if we've got that kind of personal attention, we know everybody by name, they're not gonna get lost in the gaps, right? Mm -hmm. We're gonna see them, we're gonna know them, and we're gonna help walk with them through it. And there's programmatic consequence to this. We wanna make sure that there's things that they can stay engaged in, but there's also just this personal element mm -hmm. that making sure that they, they aren't lost once something formal ends or that they're called out into living out their own particular gifts and talents and mission, yeah. you know. Well, we're going to take a break at this point. We're going to hold you over for the final segment. This has been so very, very rich. Hope that you're enjoying this show and that you're being filled with the confidence that is in the Lord Jesus Christ, that you have all that is necessary to share with your young people. They have a free will too, and you can do everything right in a lot of ways, and it turns out not the way you're hoping but God can write straight on crooked lines. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Please don't go away. speaking with Daniel McCormick here and continuing our conversation about the attrition of our young people, young adults uh, drifting away or conscientiously deciding to leave the Catholic Church. And you've proposed so many wonderful things and recommendations to, to give to our children while we have them so that if they really get these things, will they ever really depart from it? And those who have departed from it, how might we you know, be used as a vessel to hopefully at the right time speak a word in season to them. So yeah. we only got about a minute and a half, two minutes. So I'm just in interested in your closing thoughts. All of this starts and ends with him. And we have to go back to him constantly for our own renewal. We need to spend the time with our Lord in prayer. We need to really seek him out uh, in the sacramental life of his church. And um, we just need to rest in him. When we were looking through Brandon Boyd's book uh, before he came out here, one of the things that he highlights is, is fasting, mm -hmm. you know, really uh, seeking that, that the most perfect thing, you know, to give up even uh, those, those bodily needs and, yeah. and seeking out what's, what's yeah. most important, mm -hmm. which is him yes. and desiring that for others. So, you know, there's a lot of, of things that were given in principle that I think could be applied creatively, um, but we don't want to think again that like this is all our initiative. We are bringing our own gifts and talents into the Lord's work. This is His initiative. It's His yeah. church, mm -hmm. and uh, and we need to rest in Him. It's yeah. beautifully said. And you know, I'm thinking about this whole thing of drifting away. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know if this is right scientifically, but I'm thinking about the tides coming in and the tides going out, mm -hmm. or maybe there's a time of just kind of inertia and they're kind of there drifting. Mm -hmm. We can't be about the tide going out. Mm -hmm. We have to be about the tide coming in. Everything that's yeah. of the Lord, everything that's good, everything that's, that you let our minds dwell on these things, teach these things to our young people while we have them. Because if it's just inertia, mm -hmm. they're going to drift out and drift away. Whether yeah. conscientiously or not, they're just gonna be drifting out there. We need to now yeah. give them every good thing. We need to fast for them and, and pray for them now while we have them, never mind if they drift out and, and move away. And I think people are so hungry mm -hmm. for the outreach. I think, you know, COVID has amplified this, but even before we were so technologically isolated, mm -hmm. I think sometimes folks think that um, young people can only be reached through technology, but I think sometimes being enmeshed in that world makes you all the more hungry mm -hmm. for real true relationship. And, uh, and so I think that we should, um, just recognize that there's that openness and mm -hmm. desire on the part of young people Amen. and where, the God, where God's provided the opportunity to, to be responsive and to reach out and love. Mm -hmm. Daniel, thank you so much thank for your you. wisdom yeah. and your insights and for all the good news you've shared with us today thank because you. there's nothing more painful than having a young person who's drifted away from the church or says that they no longer want to be a part of the Catholic faith. 
um, the story's not over until it's over. Mm -hmm. And Christ is searching for those who need saving, need a renewal of faith. He's come for those who are sick, those who are wayward. He's attracted to your child that has wandered away, that has drifted off, and he's searching for them, even more than we're searching for them, to bring them home. You're an important part of this family. You're always at home with Jim and with Joy. Keep it on EWTN. God bless you and all of your loved ones, wherever they might be. Bye now.